Are you ready for a drive into the future? Well, we've got the 2023 Prius Prime and with its incredible new design as well as advanced technology, it promises to be something, but that is the question. Does it live up to the promise? Well, in this episode, we're gonna find out. Let's go for a drive. I'm your host, Brian Max, racing driver, lover of driving fast, fun things. And on this channel, you get reviews for drivers from drivers. Now this new Prius, let alone this being a Prius Prime, is a bit of a milestone because it's kind of the first Prius that's really attractive. And it's also on point because it looks as modern as it's supposed to be. So from a design standpoint, this Prius is totally spot on. Now the Prime, on the other hand, that's why we're here. And before we get into what this is like to drive, let's have a look at this in a little more depth. This is the all new Prius, but this is the Prime and it is loaded with a whole bunch of tech. So there's a lot to unpack here. As you know, the Prime in the name designates, this Prius is a plug-in hybrid that promises some real world electric range. The two liter four cylinder makes 150 horsepower and 139 pounds of torque. And the electric motor produces about 161 horsepower. Combined, the power unit produces 220 total horsepower. The battery is 13.6, kilowatt hours and can be charged easily overnight on the level one charger. EV only driving range is 44 miles on the SE trim and 39 miles on the others. Max EV only speed is 84 miles an hour, by the way. Transmission is a CVT, of course, and this is front wheel drive only. Steering is electrically assisted. The SE gets a slightly slower steering ratio. Speaking of the SE, it also gets unique 17 inch alloy wheels with wheel covers. All other trims get 19s. Suspension is based around McPherson struts at the front, multi-link at the rear, four-wheel disc brakes with regenerative braking, of course, through the electric motor. As with most Toyotas, it's loaded with modern safety systems and interior tech. If it's not obvious by now, the SE is the hyper mileage sort of trim in the Prius Prime range, and apparently it should be capable of getting about 600 miles of total range, if you can believe it or not. Curb weight of the Prius Prime is about 3,500 pounds, give or take the depending on your trim level. In the driver's seat, it's time to take stock of a bunch of things. And this is a mix of a bunch of different feels, if I can articulate it that way. The one thing is that this has a feel of a very futuristic car. And that's the way a lot of the ergonomics are designed, the way the secondary controls are laid out. Even the controls on the steering wheel have a different orientation than any other Toyota or Lexus for that matter. But the biggest thing here, my biggest takeaway from being right here has to do with the steering wheel and the instrument cluster. The steering wheel is a smaller diameter than uh, most other cars of this size, let alone Toyotas. So it's actually, it feels like it's about an inch smaller in diameter than other Toyotas, that's for sure. As well, instrument cluster, that is beautiful, beautifully laid out, has all the information I'm looking for. It's kind of a combination of a cool instrument cluster, but also maybe takes the place of a heads up display. The other consideration is, however, the adjustment of the steering wheel in relation to that instrument cluster. And I want the steering wheel a little bit higher so that I'm just a little bit more comfortable here. Maybe I'd get used to this, I'm not right now. But what happens is the upper portion of the steering wheel interferes with my view of the bottom of the instrument cluster. So I'd like to spend a little bit more time with this because this is the first time we're driving this together. So I'd like to spend a little bit more time with this before I render a final verdict. The infotainment system kind of dominates the experience because it's so close to the driver and the passenger compared to at least the instrument cluster. But this is Toyota's latest system. It's pretty high tech and of course has all the connectivity wired and wireless that you could ever want. And also I think has some voice controls if I remember correctly, but otherwise, this is very different than any other Toyota, very futuristic in terms of the way it's designed and the ergonomics are laid out. I do have to talk about the relationship of the seat to the steering wheel and the pedals. At least to the pedals, I'm perfectly situated. I like the overall shape and support of the seat and I've got it down to the floor, which is where I normally like to sit anyway. But like I mentioned earlier, I'd like to get the steering wheel up a little higher and then it just interferes with the instrument cluster. So not really perfect if I do want to 
put that steering wheel or I like it, well, then it's here and at least I can see the speedometer, but I lose some secondary and tertiary information on the screen. Otherwise, very happy with the seating position here and visibility is pretty good, at least in terms of forward visibility. You've got a very narrow window when you're looking out the mirror and that's, of course, a function of the shape and angle of that hatch, but otherwise very happy with visibility. And of course, you have cameras to help you park this thing anytime you need to park it. In terms of spaciousness, well, kudos to Toyota for making sure there's lots of space under the hatch. No problem there. This first row, lots of room for you and your passenger. Second row, maybe not so much. I can barely fit behind myself in my regular seating position. So if you had a full-size adult back here, you might want to give them a little bit more room as the driver move your seating position forward a little. In terms of acceleration, Toyota says this will do 0 to 60 in 6.6 seconds, and it kind of feels like that once you've got it on the move from a dead stop, it's not that quick, but once you're on the move, it does seem very, very quick and at least enjoyable in that way. At higher speeds, getting onto the freeway, for example, it's not that quick, but in city speeds, this thing is quick enough and it's going to keep up with most traffic. In terms of overall traction, well, there's just enough here to make sure that it can accelerate quickly, but keep in mind this new Prius is on fairly narrow tires, so you don't have an overall abundance of traction, but there's just enough with these tires. They're definitely more oriented to rolling resistance as you'd expect with a Prius. Yeah, it is, it is quick. It is quick in certain situations. Of course, with the CVT, it just loves holding revs at a certain range of engine operation so that you do get maximum acceleration, and that is a good thing. But it is, of course, a CVT, and yeah, it's just fine. I would rather have a geared automatic, but that is just me. And sure, this CVT is exceptionally well refined and it doesn't have any ugly habits, but it's still a CVT. I suppose the highlight of the transmission is this shifter. It's reminiscent of what's on the LC500, which I really dig. It's a cool kind of shifter. Most people won't be able to figure it out on the first go, but it's a very, very nicely well-resolved shifter of all things. Since this is the Prius Prime, there are a bunch of different drive modes. So the actual driving modes, you can customize one of them then you got sport normal and eco which is very appropriate for a prius prime but then there are other functions here as well the prime has three specific hybrid driving modes one is ev mode which leans on the battery only for driving around town the hv ev auto mode is an in-between sort of smart mode that engages the gasoline engine only when necessary and of course hybrid mode is the standard mode and it is a combination between electric and gas driving and for fun, let's take this on the freeway again. Yeah, like over 30 miles an hour, this thing accelerates up to highway speeds very, very quickly. And then once you're here, and if you want to keep up with traffic in this part of the world, you have to drive at somewhat extra legal speeds. And then this Prius Prime really doesn't want to accelerate that much quicker. Overall, in terms of dynamics, this Prius is no sports car. It is optimized for efficiency and comfort. So in terms of it being a driver's car, not quite there. Every kind of feedback from this car is muted, whether it's from the steering or the suspension. There's really not a lot of feel or feedback from the chassis or the steering. But braking, on the other hand, that is one excellent confident pedal. Great braking power, excellent feel, excellent modulation, and that's really what you want in a brake pedal. Since the suspension's tuned for comfort more than handling, it's relatively soft and I can't really see it here, but as you can see when I'm going through these corners here, there's a bit of body roll. You definitely feel it here in the driver's seat. The trade-off though is that ride comfort is excellent. You and your passengers are going to be very comfortable. Around town, it's actually very, very quiet, even at higher city speeds. When you're on the freeway, though, there's a little bit more wind and road noise than I would have expected. How do you spec yours? Well, that is the question. It really depends on what kind of features you're looking for. However, pricing isn't announced, and what you need to understand about trims is this. 
here's the deal. Get the SE if you're a hyper miler, otherwise choose between the XSE and XSE Premium. One thing, the SE gets a cloth interior, the other Softex, which isn't bad, but I just prefer the cloth. The Softex is actually quite attractive. Anyway, XSE Premium gets things like heated and ventilated seats, advanced parking, JBL sound, and of course you can get the optional roof on the XSE Premium. All of that said, expect the Prius Prime to start around $32,000 US. My verdict, well, on first drives, you really don't get a lot of time with these cars. So that is definitely the one thing I'm looking for. But with this new Prius Prime, it's better designed, it's bigger, it's quicker, and it's more efficient. What more could you want? Well, for me, the only thing I want more of is seat time. So I'm looking forward to spending more time with this Prius Prime. So look for a follow-up review sometime in the near future. Surprise, surprise, we're stuck in Southern California rush hour traffic who knew anyway just kidding thanks for hanging out with us today and having a look at this 2023 prius prime hope you like this episode and if you did you're not new to youtube you know what to do smash the subscribe button turn on your notifications like this video and as always sharing is caring so please share this with your friends especially on reddit because on reddit they really need to see reviews for drivers from drivers if you have any questions or comments please drop them in the comments below i'll get back to you as soon as i can if you want to support the channel please hit up our merch store links here links below lots of great stuff for driving and enthusiasts like us, including our very popular line of Save the Manuals merch. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time. And remember, cars don't understeer by themselves, not even Toyota Prius Primes. Oh, pff. put that on, bring a trailer. You'll make a bazillion dollars. Wow. But it looks like they're trying to cut out the middleman and cut out bring a trailer by putting big phone numbers on there. Very cool collector car.